Give you online, selling to online better. Seventeen thousand four double oh eight. Dora, yours in Hong Kong. Not one. No more bids. I think that is five thousand five hundred pounds. Selling at five five. Five five, and that is. Five, four, three, eight. Thank you very much, Jan. Lord, is, apart from panel 5593, five, selling at 4,500. And that is two, panel 5593. Five, thank you. Uh, no, thank you very much, Jan. It's yours online, selling for 8,000 pounds. Five, five, nine, three. Thank you very much indeed. I'm going to sell for twelve thousand pounds. Twelve thousand two paddle number five two eight two. Thank you very much indeed. Not one. It's not in a room. It's online at thirteen thousand pounds, and I'm going to sell for thirteen thousand pounds. Navy, you sure? It's at thirteen thousand pounds. And that is 5270, lot 159, the tripod uh, dish. And we'll start the bidding here, please. What should we say? 5,000 pounds? Who's going to start me at 5,000? 5,000 pounds. Who's going to start me at 5,000? 8,000 pounds. Nope. Is that a no, Ariel? Nope. Ariel? Is that a no? 25,000. Benedetta, you're all setting it at 25,000. 544. Nine, thank you very much indeed. Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from BitEmOut.com, BitEmOutLive.com, and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, May 14th, 2021. And in this video, we're going to take a look and see how things went at the uh, Roger Caverne auction that was held at Bonhams this uh, past week over in the UK. Uh, this was the catalog. We all, many of you know who Roger Caverne is. He's a, a famous uh, Asian art dealer and scholar, uh, author, uh, and all that. And he's decided they, they called this the moving on sale he's um it's being done in two parts this was the first part the next part will take place in june and it's basically his inventory and some of his own things and uh he's not he's not i don't think he's leaving the business entirely i think he's just sort of uh, maybe maybe getting a little tired of running a gallery who knows it's a free country and um i you know i, I i'm sure we haven't seen the last of them but at any rate the sale was an interesting one because it was established it was set up so that with very very uh, uh low estimates and uh, no reserves of any kind, which is, as many of you know, is really unusual in today's art market to have a no reserve auction. And, uh, but I think that the results of the auction and the auction itself uh, did a very important service to the, uh, to, to the market. It set the tone, it set the prices, um, it gave everybody a much clearer understanding of where prices stand today because there were no reserves to fight against. There was no, in other words, a reserve is sort of an artificial bid. Uh, it's, it's the point below which something won't be sold. And in his sale, whatever it brings, it brings. And that is a true test of the market. And the, and the prices were extremely good. As I said, the estimates were very, very low. Uh, for example, we'll start with... Um, with the, uh, let's see, there's the, the cover of the catalog, this, this uh, 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 gray and russet jade Kong, Neolithic period to sh early Shang Dynasty, very nice one. It brought 10,837 pounds or a little over $15,000 US. And it was estimated, the, I think the estimate was two or 3,000, which was a you know, real giveaway price. But it was a lovely piece of jade and it did very, very well. And uh, it, it, because a lot of these jades turn up on the market, a lot of the things in the sale do turn up in the market in other places. And sometimes they get overestimated. The, 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 the sellers are too aggressive, um, usually against the advice of the auction houses, and um, they end up being disappointed. Roger understands that. He's a dealer. And he said, sell it for what it's worth. And that's what, that's what that thing was worth. All right. And then we get on to things like this, this archaistic bronze ritual vessel, G. Late Shang Dynasty had a very, very bright uh, 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 patina to it, lovely old patina. Ended up selling for uh, $16,107, again, against a, a, an estimate of just a several thousand dollars. But that is, that is what they are worth, and that was the price that it brought. Um, and keep in mind that the provenance of, of having it come from Roger Caverne isn't bad either. 
All right, so that helps the piece. Then there was this, this fabulous big Fang Lei. Uh, this was a very nice early bronze wine vessel, Shang Dynasty, of course. And it was estimated at around 30, they put an estimate of 30 to 50,000 pounds on it. Ended up selling for 187,000 pounds or uh, $263,000 US. But a great example, and it did very, very well. Again, lovely, lovely bronze. Then over here to the Sichuan pottery uh, model of a, it was sort of a big model of a, of a horse. Han Dynasty, uh, very, very nice set. A very modest estimate, a couple of thousand dollars. Ended up selling for 23000 I like this horse in particular. I love the way the head was shaped. I like the color, uh, and I love the details of the face. Just charming, and he's sort of prancing along very proudly. Nice-looking, nice-looking piece of pottery and early. All right, and then on to this. This was one of my favorite things in the sale. It wasn't the most expensive. It was this, this, uh, this flask right here, this Bian, uh, uh, Bian Hui, Bian Hu. Uh, very nice color. I love the, the the surface on it. I liked very much the shape of these. They did these, of course, in bronze during the Han Dynasty as well. This was a pottery example, and somebody bought both people, including uh, both both pieces, including the amphora. The money, I think, was on 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 on, on the Bianu, but they bought this and the amphora just for twenty five hundred and five dollars. I think that was a great buy for somebody. Very interesting object, and they both were in good condition, which is which is very important. Very very nice. And then over here to this, the small gilt bronze who form vase, uh, really nice one. Uh, Ming possibly Sung somewhere in there uh, uh, dynasty, early early Ming at, at, at the at the at the at the at the most recent. Uh, a beautiful example. Ended up selling for ten thousand seven hundred thirty eight dollars. But it had a very nice surface on it. I really like the surface on this a lot. There it is. Okay, we can blow it up a little. Uh, lots of legitimate looking wear. Love the mask on the side. And the ribbing that ran down the body. Uh, very nicely cast. Good example. Very attractive. And this is small. This was not a big piece. I think it was four or five inches tall. Four and three eighths inches tall. But uh, very attractive. We talked about it in the preview just because I liked it. Sometimes I do that with the previews. I show the things I like more than uh, maybe the, than the most expensive things uh, because I, I think that's what collecting should be. Um, it's not always about the top dollar. It's about what you like aesthetically, and uh, that's how I do it. Any rate, and then there was this, this really nice pair of archaic bronze ritual vessels, uh, wine vessels. Um, um, they're called Fang Hu's and uh, Han Dynasty again, and they had their original lids, which made them really attractive. And it sold for nine thousand dollars U.S. ninety eight hundred and forty three dollars, uh, but I think these these were really really nice. And to get a pair is always highly desirable. Uh, here's the surface on them. Yeah, they've been banged around a little bit. They're Han Dynasty. That's how they should look. Um, if you see them, if you see these old bronzes, uh, you know, with perfectly uniform uh, surfaces and patinas and no signs of anywhere, you should be very very leery because they do make copies of them. But these were nice. These were a nice pair. And then onto this, this green glaze um, uh, yaksha oil lamp, oil lamp um, of Qi Dynasty, Northern Qi, of beautiful quality, nice glaze. I love the face on this guy. And uh, ended up selling for about $60,000, way over its estimate. The estimate, I think, was three or 4000 on this. But just beautifully potted, beautiful glaze. Uh, I love his expression. He looks like he's just barely tolerating having this thing on top of his head. And this very nice lotus base, very typical of what you see often, most often, of course, on bronzes, on Buddhist bronzes. But uh, here they applied it to this, uh, just a, a beautiful, beautiful example. And um, uh, 62,750 pounds or 88,000 U.S., uh, but a great, great example. And this was not very big either. This was only uh, five and seven-eighths inches tall. These are not big, you know, big presentation pieces. These are small lamps, very personal. And uh, then on to this, this really rare. This was a very, very rare thing, and it had a modest estimate of a couple of thousand, 1,500 pounds or something. Uh, 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 it was a Warring States period uh, uh, inlaid uh, uh, gilt bronze belt hook. And uh, these, these sort of personal accoutrements are highly collected. And this was a particularly nice one, again, with a lion's mask on the end and then another mask here on the, on the tip. 
uh, but beautifully done and, and with Chinese glass in it. And Chinese glass in the Han Dynasty was pretty rare. Uh, they didn't make a lot of it. It was very difficult for them to make and uh, ended up uh, doing just fine. It brought $19,652 against a modest reserve again. Uh, and these, these, these uh, results include the buyer's premium, in case you're wondering. So that was the total price all in, all right? And then on to this. This, this was a, a, an exceptional uh, a piece of limestone of a Luan, uh, beautifully done, 9th or 10th century, somewhere in there. Uh, they're never too accurate on the day. Too too, they never get too precise on the dating of some of these, unless there's something in the robes that indicate a particular era or period very specifically. And uh, there was 37 inches high. So this was a big one, over three feet tall, nice looking surface on it. Uh, if you, I, I love these old stone, I love scar, uh, Chinese carvings and stone sculptures. And this was a beautiful one. The facial features were just excellently done. The, 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 uh, the, uh, uh, the way the eyelids are, are curled under, connecting into the nose, creating this very sort of continuous view. Beautiful eyes, with bulging lids, uh, pursed lips, and he's holding up a, a pearl or something in his hand. And at uh, any rate, it was, uh, let's see, it was estimated, I think, at 30 to 50,000 uh, euros or pounds, rather. Ended up selling for 137,000, uh, way over its estimate. Again, three, four times its estimate, but a beautiful example and, um, you know, nice expression on the, on the carving, which is very, very important, how the face uh, looks to the, to the viewer. And uh, let's see, uh, what else is this? Cascading flowers, waves, discipline. There we go. Okay, covered it. All right, now moseying on over, gilt bronze leaf shamed horse. This is a horse harness pendant. Um, uh, these these turn up periodically. They're they're quite interesting uh, because they should decorate their horses. Obviously, in the Tang Dynasty, it was a very elegant period, and uh, th this uh, particular piece brought twenty six thousand six hundred and seventy one dollars, or nineteen thousand pounds. But a rare thing, and again, it was modestly estimated at a few thousand. All of these things, the estimates in general, were all, in the, with the, just a couple of exceptions, estimated under $10,000. No matter what, most, say 80% of the sale was estimated under 3000 uh, 4000 And uh, this was a particularly nice one. The gilding was in great condition. It was beautifully cast and uh, in, good con in good shape all over. And then over here is a fine pottery camel um, a model of a camel. Again, Tang Dynasty, estimated at around a thousand, a thousand year, a thousand pounds. <clears throat> it's a nice one. Ended up selling for sixty-eight hundred and one dollars, uh, but it's a, a good one. And, and the saddle on these are generally detachable. All right, now we have one of these for sale actually over on uh, on the Bitamount Live site right now. All right, now uh, that was just an aside, a shameless plug. And uh, onto this, this phosphatic black uh, glazed ewer, uh, beautifully done. Again, this was, uh, I think this was estimated at 1,500 pounds. Ended up selling for $17,897, but a really, really pretty example. The glaze on it was nicely done. The way it drips and iridesces down over this very opaque, flat black uh, body. There's a slight glaze to it, but not much. And then this beautifully, beautifully smoothed out uh, paste underneath here. You can see the body where they before they dipped it in the glaze, how well, how well finished that is. Just a nice example all the way around. And 17000 is certainly in the range for these. Uh, this is what they bring. So it's, the, it's telling us that the market is still pretty strong for a lot of this stuff. Uh, some of the Chinese porcelains and ceramics I've noticed here, and I noticed on some of the other sales that we're going to talk about next week, um, were, were a little bit soft, or uh, they didn't make their didn't make their reserves because I think a lot of people that are that bought uh, these porcelains and have been buying Chinese stuff are in, in reality more investors than they are collectors. And um, they, they, they've, some of them are deciding now is the time to sell some of them. And they're coming in, I think, with uh, sort of ham-handed, heavy estimates. The auction houses want to do the business, so they're accepting them probably against their better judgment um, because they need to fill up sales, which is just part of the business. And uh, one of the Sotheby's sales, this is just an aside, Sotheby's had a sale this weekend. I don't think half the lot sold. And I think it's just because the, the sellers, not that there's not interest, there's interest. But the sellers are, are, are refusing to face reality in many cases of what their things are really worth. And um, they've, they've added on value to them artificially, and, um, and they're not going to get there. All right. 
Uh, you have to you have to sell to the market. And what Roger Caverne did with his sale of his things, he said, I'm I'm not I'm selling to the market and I'm letting the market decide what my things are worth. All right, sellers don't decide the prices. The market decides prices, and um, uh, I think that some of the there were some disappointments in a few sales, and I'm, I'm very curious to see how the uh, 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 Hong Kong sales coming up do, because if if, if this sort of uh, condition where high estimates are being insisted upon uh, by people, um, uh, there's going to be a lot of dead merchandise on the market, and. Uh, Bottoms, BIs, as they're known in the trade, um, that stigma lasts for a long time. If it sells, if it put up for auction today and it buys in, it doesn't make its estimate, um, and you can't, the auction house can't post sell it for you. Which I, if they offer to do it, do it, because it's it's going to be a while before you can resell that piece, uh, just because it's it, it it's got the stigma now of having not sold. And uh, people say that doesn't matter much. It matters. It matters a lot psychologically. At any rate, this was one of my favorite little paintings in the sale. Just a very primitive, unsigned, um, and, you know, by anonymous, my favorite artist uh, of, a, of a Ming Dynasty painting. And uh, let's see if we can get it to load. There it is. And it's been knocked around a little bit, but I love the colors. I love the, t the couple on the veranda looking over. She's leaning over on her elbow a little bit. And they have this lovely little house with a balustrade around it. Uh, nice little uh, country pagoda, beautiful, beautiful setting, and uh, it was estimated at you know a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars or something. Ended up selling for seventeen hundred and eight, uh, seventeen thousand eight hundred and ninety-seven dollars, or a little over almost thirteen thousand pounds. But nice little picture, very nice picture. And then the compound chest. This was wonderful. This was a, a very unusual large, and these are fairly rare, painted compound chests, uh, late Ming Dynasty. Typically, as you know, they weren't painted. Uh, most of these uh, later Ming chests were left in, in their wood. They're often done at Huan Wali. And uh, let this picture uh, focus in a little bit. But the landscape painting on this uh, with the birds and the flowers and, and the contrasting hardware against the case, holding it all together very firmly, sort of containing something of beauty, uh, is a very, this is a really, really impactful piece of furniture. And I don't think it sold for a lot of money. I mean, it did, it sold for way over its estimate. The estimate, I think, was under $10,000. Uh, but it ended up selling for 44000 but given the state of the furniture market and how hot furniture is, um, I think this was an actually an exceptional buy. I thought this was very, very attractive. The color is excellent, and the painting was quite good on top of it, and the, and the proportions of the case are all good all the way down, top to bottom. Nice looking thing. And then over here to this, this is a, a sort of a middle Ming period uh, bronze vase, a Hu form vase uh, with a, a simple body with just that ribbing on it again uh, that you see often on Ming pieces. It was big though, yeah, it was 21 inches tall. Ended up selling for $30,000 against a couple of thousand dollar estimate. But this had a real feel to it, this, this bronze. The patina was very nice on it, these, these, these salmony orange red highlights coming through um, it, it, all the way up and down, just, just very, very lovely. Uh, beautifully done, had a, and this is big, big piece, 20 inches. You don't see these bronzes that size very often. And ended up selling for $30,180 or 21,500 British pounds. But again, very, very nice. And as you know, most of these Ming bronzes um, uh, typically are in the you know the, 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 the seven or eight to 14 inch range maybe. They typically didn't get a lot bigger than that. And this was 21 inches, which I think makes it particularly interesting and, and very presentable in, you know, to, to have out. And then this, the, the late Ming uh, altar front, they redated this during the sale and said that it's actually 18th century, which, which I kind of agree with uh, the way it's drawn. Um, not a big change between um, Ming and Qing, but, but stylistically, um, um, maybe Linda Rigglesworth has been working with them on it, um, maybe argued for a slightly later date. Didn't bother anybody, though, and way over its estimate of a few thousand, ended up selling for $21,407 which is a, a very nice price, but absolutely beautiful piece of silk. And it's an altar front, and it was in ex exceptional condition from what I could see. We get the picture to load. Um, if you look at it carefully, you always look along the edges of these things, and uh, you'll see that this was in general in just beautiful condition all the way around. I don't see a lot, much in the way of staining, no wear, no poles to the silk. Uh, beautifully done, the facial expression. 
of the of the of the uh, uh, dragon, I think, is maybe part of the reason why they dated a little later. It's more of a ch early Qing face dragon than than a than a Ming one. It had four claws, which is often more typical of Qing pieces. And uh, but the vine work was very good, and some of that looks very Ming. But overall, they I guess they changed their mind, decided it was, uh, it was probably early Qing. And this outer border is also the type of border you see on Ming silks and on Ming carpets. Uh, but but they think that maybe I suspect they just realized it. It was just made a little bit later and uh, uh, using a lot of earlier el popular elements. All right, but it ended up doing great. Twenty one thousand four hundred and seven dollars. And then moseying along over to some cloisonne. This is just an example. They had a lot of good cloisonne in the sale. We'll look at a couple of them. And this was estimated two or three thousand whatevers. And uh, but nicely done. And the chimeras on these were particularly pronounced. Nice and big. Nice and gutsy. Um, posed slightly differently, it appears, uh, but uh, very good condition on the gilding, and the pot itself looked good. The rim doesn't seem to have been straightened at any point. Uh, the body looks nice. The enameling looked very, very nice. And this is a 16th century piece, probably made about 1550 to 1580, uh, and it ended up selling for $21,407, or uh, 15 and a quarter uh, thousand uh, pounds. But a nice looking example, really, really nice. But the chimeras on this sort of made it because they were exceptionally big. And uh, the, how big was this? Probably seven or eight inches? Not even, five and two eighths inches. Nice small one, very pretty. And then over to this. This was one of the, this was something I talked about in the previous in, in the in the preview for the sale because I, I thought this was just wonderful. The, the scene on it's very unusual. Uh, it's a scene from the Three Kingdoms story and uh, circular plaque and plaques are quite unusual in Kang Shi wears. And uh, apparently everybody thought so because I think they estimated it at 2,000 euros or 2,000 pounds or something. Anyway, it took off. It sold for 44,217 dollars. But uh, I did some looking around on this, and I couldn't find um, quickly any uh, others similar to it. So I think it's it's extremely rare, and I'm sure a lot of people looked it up. And what happens is when something this unusual turns up on the market, people try to find comps for it. And two things, one of two things can happen. You can't find a comp for it and you lose interest in it because you're not, you're not sure how to figure it out. Or you, 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 you look and you can't find comps and you, you know it's of the period and that means to you it's rare and it's worth going after. And in this case, it was rare and worth going after and some people chased it and they chased it pretty hard and they ended up paying just a, you know, a little under $50,000 for it. Very nice though. And then this, the, graze, the, the green glazed Kangxi apple green jar. Now, these are always popular. People love these. They've been around. They made them in the 19th century as well, of course. Kangxi examples are particularly good. Uh, over the years, I've had a lot of them. They were made in many sizes. They could be several inches tall to you know, 10 or 12 inches tall. This one was five inches tall. But the glaze was particularly good on it. The potting was particularly nice on it and ended up selling for $13,423. But the crackle on the pot was very nice too. If you haven't, if you didn't bother to stop and look at it, and if you like, if you like pieces that have nice intentional crackles on them, um, this this one had a very nice one. Here it is. You can see it a little better now. Here it is. And you notice the crackles get very small up around the mouth, and they're quite large down around the center part of the vase, which is sort of normal. But the the the, the crackle on this was quite attractive, and uh, again, thirteen thousand and change for that pot. And then as far as jades go, the jades all did great. Uh, Roger Caverne, of course, wrote the book called Jade, literally. And if you don't have it, get the book. Uh, if, you don't, if, you, if you're going to buy one book on jade, buy Roger Caverne's book on jade. It's a beast of a book. It's a big, big book, big volume. But it talks about jade from not only China, but all over the world. And it's a really interesting look at how uh, cultures around the world, as they discovered jade, how they adopted it into their own art forms and how they used it. And he talks about South American jade, African jade, Australian jade, jade from everywhere. It's a really great book. It's worth reading. And uh, 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 kudos for him for writing it, because I think it's the only one of its kind, other than sort of generic jade books. Uh, this, this really covers the art, the high points of the art of each culture uh, contained within it. So it's worth looking at. But this was a very nice piece of a, of a seated uh, Buddha figure. Uh, I like the way that the, 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 the uh, fabric the, w implied, which is like the robes, are sort of cascading over. And then a matching one cascading over again on a lotus base, 
beautifully done. This did very well. It brought $140,000 or $100,250 British pounds. But very attractive. The estimate, I think, was ten or 20,000 uh, uh, pounds on it. Uh, of course, it was going to go through that. But a very nice example. And this piece was a uh, decent size, eight inches tall. Nice looking, nice looking, nice size, you know, to go in a cabinet. And then the, sh then the things that got more cloisonne came along. Uh, this was a really nice who formed base, late Ming, uh, you know, Wan Li, late Zhejiang, Wan Li period, somewhere in there. Ended up selling for uh, $30,180, going for about five times its high estimate. But a beautiful form, and I like the, uh, the, the, the use of the red-headed egret on it and, and sort of walking along within a cartouche and then surrounded by a cracked ice pattern with, uh, f coated with flowers. Just very attractive. And now, what's next? Oh, the bell, the iron bell. I, uh, as I mentioned, I've mentioned before, Chinese iron is, is it's funny. It's, it's much rarer than bronze. And um, it sells for a relative bargain compared to bronze. Uh, this is this is a, a wonderful bell. They do turn up periodically, and uh, if this was a, 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 a Ming Dynasty or early Qing Kangxi period bronze bell like this in this form, uh, it would sell probably for more money. Uh, in this case, this sold I think very reasonably, seventy five hundred dollars U.S. or fifty three hundred pounds, including the buyer's premium. And uh, it's very, very nice. The Chinese just didn't get into making too much with iron uh, as they were, they were so used to making things out of bronze or bronze alloys. And uh, uh, iron is not often uh, found near, nearly as much as, is not, is not found nearly as much as bronzes. But this was a nice one, and I think, I think it went for a fair price. All right, and then over to this. This had an estimate, as I recall. It was under five, like under $2,000 estimate. I don't know why. Uh, I guess they were just trying to really send the message that what you decide is what it's worth. And uh, this shot up. It did just great. It brought $44,217, um, or around 31,000 uh, pounds, for a nice big pot. And this was a fairly good-sized jar. This thing was, what was it, six... Uh, yeah, 18 inches, 18 and a half inches tall. So with the lid, this thing would have been over 20 inches. This would have been a nice big one. We've seen these molded, uh, these big pots before. Uh, the decoration on this one was particularly nice. The, uh, the, the the precious objects and so forth on it. And uh, you have all these, these tables. You have chimes, these little Buddhist things floating around, scrolls wrapped in silks and so forth, books here, uh, lots to look at. When you look at these carefully, you see a great deal. And then they have interspersed between the, between each section the classical sort of Chinese landscapes of mountains, rocks, and water, and so forth. But a very, very nice example. And then it has the scrolling lotus at the top around the, ne around the neck, $44,217. And this was probably the, uh, the, the, of course, the fanciest piece of porcelain in the sale. It was this really nice yellow, uh, uh, underglazed blue and yellow ground kangxi uh, uh, bowl, uh, dragon with ruyi, and it's inscribed over here. And uh, but very, very fine example and quite rare. And as you know, these are not very big bowls. This one, this one was uh, just five and a sixteenth inches in diameter. It looks bigger. This this form always looks like it's an eight or ten inch bowl. It's not. This is a little five inch one. But absolutely lovely quality. The dragon was beautifully drawn, and it ended up selling for $193,365, um, or £137,000. I think it was estimated at around twenty or £30,000, uh, uh, pounds. but uh, it was going to go way through that. But the color was excellent on it, and it did just fine at the end. And then over to this, this is one of my one of my other favorite things in the sale was this piece of Yi Xingware uh, in the form of a, of, of a double gourd that's inscribed and it's signed uh, uh, Peng 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 Nian, and I don't know who he is, but at any rate, I'm sure I didn't look him up. Um, uh, I'm sure I've seen his things before, but at any rate, this was a great example. Sold for forty-four thousand two hundred seventeen dollars. Had a you know peanuts estimate on it, but what a what a great object. What a great object. And this is a wall vase. So this would this probably this has a hole somewhere on the back right around here where you could put it on a little hook, put some flowers on it. Very, very nice. Um, and forty four thousand two hundred seventeen dollars. And then this, uh, very nice. This was a, there were some very good enamel wares in the sale. This was just one of them. This ended up selling for seventeen thousand eight hundred ninety seven dollars because there's a pink ground. These pink ground enamel wares are extremely unusual. 
Um, they do not turn up often. And uh, uh, so sometimes I mentioned this last week with these. Is sometimes you you end up looking at the at the at this beautiful pink ground and overlooking how finely painted they are. Now I want to point out that Sotheby's has a round one. It's very some similar color palette to this. Different scene. It's it's floral sprigs. Uh, coming into it, but it's a round one, same general period. Um, it's coming up with a thousand or fifteen hundred dollar estimate, and uh, I think it's in their sale next week or in a week or two. Uh, to give you some guidance on it, this brought seventeen thousand eight hundred ninety-seven, and it was eight inches wide. This is not a, a tray. This is a, sm a small, a small plate, um, and it's it's of course lotus shaped, which is very very nice. The other one is round, but. It'll give you some idea of what they're probably really worth. Right? So if, you, if you're looking at the pink one at Sotheby's, understand that it's probably going to go way over that estimate. And if it doesn't, I think you got yourself a steal on your hands. All right. And then onto this, this very nice little enamel uh, brush washer, uh, a water pot, a Taibo, a Taibo Zun. And uh, b beautifully colored, nice example. And again, this had a very little a peanuts estimate on it, I think eight to $1,200 or something. Ended up selling for twenty-one thousand four hundred and seven dollars, or fifteen thousand two hundred and fifty pounds. All right, and this was sort of the theme of the whole sale. Every, everything in the sale, uh, uh, as I said, had very modest estimates, and ended up by far uh, going past them in most cases. There was a real interest in this stuff because they weren't fighting reserves, and the market was very happy to see it all. All right, and, and it was welcomed. And, I, and you look at these prices and look at how this auction performed and then look and see how things do in the other parts of the market in the, in the last couple of weeks. And uh, this will sort of this is sort of a truth teller of what things should be selling for. It's very interesting. All right. That's it. We'll also do the regular weekly video. It'll be up today and some new auction catalogs will be over on the uh, bit amount reference section uh, for you guys to go through. All right. See you in a while. Have a great weekend. Bye bye.